Hi everyone, it's Leandra from Paparazzi and this is the second theme for 2015 on the Paparazzi blog that I'm introducing you to today and um, you've probably got a bit of a clue by looking at this sample here. The theme is shiny things. This sample is one of the projects that Lynn Brown and I made up for one of our Artsy Crafts events and it kind of encompasses everything and all the ideas that I've been brainstorming for shiny things. Um, it, you know, there's so much that we could do. But before I go on to that, I just want to say we've had such a fantastic response to the new blog format and there's been heaps of entries in the challenge for the last fortnight, which has just been wonderful. We're so pleased that you're enjoying it and obviously um, I'm not the only one out there who really likes fragile papers. Um, I did forget to tell you about crunchy paper, which could be a fragile paper, so Hazel and a few other people came up um, using that. And I also forgot about um, napkins, or serviettes as we call them over here. They're fantastic with their, with their layers, so a lot of people have done some really cool journal pages using napkins as well. So that's exactly what I wanted to happen. I wanted you to take the idea and interpret it your own way and explore your ideas, not just what we present on the blog. So well done, it was fantastic to see. Um, and the other thing that just comes through is how everyone seems to be slowing it down, enjoying the process, um, and just being inspired by other people on the blog. So that's fantastic. It's exactly how we envisage that it would go. So we're really pleased. Perhaps you might like to keep a journal with some of your ideas that you explore and then that's something that you can reflect on at the end of the year and it's kind of a go-to point if you ever have um, a blank page sitting in front of you and you're not sure where to start. So that might be something that you want to consider um, having a journal that you work alongside, uh, work in alongside the whole, um, the whole themes, all the different themes that we're exploring. So ahead, the next fortnight, you're going to get in touch with your inner magpie. It's all about shiny. So you might be using um, charms or there's some metal frames here. Do you remember working with this stuff back in the day? This, this little piece of shiny stuff on the front here is mica and we used to use it on everything. Um, Suze Weinberg had amazing techniques using um, these ranger frames which are microscope slides, dipping them into UT, doing sort of faux soldering around the edges. Um, lots of things with embossing powder, all of these are shiny things that you can use. Charms, we sometimes take a charm, add paint to it to distress it and give it a patina effect. This bird here is one of the Artemio wooden embellishments, they do loads of them, so is the frame on the front here and the way it's got this amazing rusty effect is using the rusting powder that we sell. It's a really bizarre product um, and it's literally a powder. It does. It's not an embossing powder, it won't melt. What you need to do is sprinkle it onto a surface and it needs to grip to the surface somehow. So in this case what we did is we put some gel medium and just tapped it randomly onto the piece of wood, sprinkled the powder in, tapped off the excess and then you spray it with water and you just keep it damp for four or five hours and the rust will start to appear. I've actually got one on the go here. I started this about 30 minutes ago so I've got um, some rusting powder sprinkled onto this Prima embellishment and I've sprayed it with water um, it's been glued on with glossy accents sprayed it with a bit of water and I also like to put some vinegar in the water and that the acid in the vinegar helps the rusting process occur much faster so this will eventually end up as dark as this it just keeps on going until you sort of stop wetting it so if you keep it nice and damp you'll get a much deeper rusty colour um, we've also got a lot of clay things going on here. So these little keys are actually sitting on top of clay. It's the same with this um, dagger here um, and the same with the charm in the middle here. So you can use clay in lots of different ways. What we wanted to do was we actually put some gilt, you know the, um, the sheets of gold leaf. 
we put a sheet of gold leaf onto the clay and ran it through the pasta machine and what that does is just cracks apart the gold leaf so that you get this nice shattered gold effect running through the clay and that's just on straight black clay and then we just sort of tore it so that it's got these lovely rustic edges and we added a little bit more translucent paint colors like brown shed are really good on this kind of thing um, just to give it that uh, slightly more brownish rusty tinge to it the centerpiece here has been stamped, it was cut to size to fit in the frame and then it's been um, a, had mica powders applied to it which again it's another technique back in the day we just used to do this loads and some of our designers are working on the blog in the next fortnight with clay so you'll get to see these techniques in more depth uh, but this one's got mica powder on there a charm has been pressed into it and when you press a charm into clay and bake it the charm stays stuck to into the clay or embedded in the clay so you can do that with beads and all kinds of things and some of the pieces of clay we even pierced holes into the clay before we baked it and then that gave us an opportunity to fix it onto the background with wire um, or to like here we fixed a charm on there so think about that think about how you're going to use it and how you're going to attach it of course wire is another lovely shiny thing uh, we've got a piece of metal here which has been stamped um, and there's just all kinds of bits and pieces going on we've even used the rusting powder on the little tiny bottles at the top here so the bottles were painted with fresco acrylic paints and then the glue dripped down it rusting powder put on the glue and then um, it was sprayed with the vinegar solution and then it started to go nice and a nice rusty color of course the best shiny product ever is treasure gold and there are little touches of treasure gold on here as well that accent um, you can see on these little bottles there's a tiny little bit of copper um, and that's just sort of the finishing touch we've even got metallic paint going on on the the bits of this is tissue paper stuck onto the chicken wire so we put tissue paper you can see it down here as well onto the chicken wire and then we actually put some puff paint on top of that and heated it and of course it all bubbles up and then that just accent accentuated the texture and that's also applied onto directly onto the wire and little bits of paint on there so all of these things are elements of shiny stuff um, this is another clay piece that I did years and years ago this must be 14 15 years old and it was a Judikin stamp that we stamped with um, a Brilliance copper ink pad and then used the mica powders on there so Clay is a lot of fun and all of these other things are great fun. But what else can we show you? Well, here's a simple thing if you want to do something a bit more quick and easy. This was another little quick artsy crafts project that we did. It shows how you can use fresco paints directly onto glass. So they were painted and then stamped. We also accented with metallic glaze. So the lid here is using grunge paper which has been heated and shaped. It was stamped with one of our Paper Artsy images, die cut with our Paper Artsy dies. And then onto the um, London night paint, we put a little bit of our metallic glaze and it just gives it a little bit of shine, but not too much. So, you know, really simple idea. We made three in a row of these to sort of like go in a window or something like that. So that's quite a fun idea. Metal is huge. So we've done so many different metal projects over the years let me just make some space here okay so this is one of our major artsy crafts projects that we did one of the first ones I think we actually did um, and we used all sorts of different metal techniques so down here it was um, using the wheels that you can buy from 10 second studio or Mercart uh, embossing the metal and then using paint to give it that patina distress effect here was a mold from 10 second studio again putting your metal onto the mold embossing it refining it adding detail painting it some of these sections here using embossing folders which I'm sure you'll recognize that there is using a ball and cup tool gives you lots of great rivet type um, texture this section here using plumbing tape and um, which is a much thinner metal tape and we actually put letters which were die cut underneath the tape then the tape goes over the top you use a paper stump 
to smooth the metal out and then you refine it with a pointy sort of tool and came over the top with a roller tool to make all the little texture in the top of the letters. And then again, all of this was distressed with a metal brush and then a patina effect with the paint. So it's so much, so much detail in a frame like this, but heaps of fun. Um, we stamped the inner bit as well. This is fabric stamped and it was coloured with ink pads. We added some stitch detail and some beads just to sort of add a little bit more interest to it. And then down the bottom here we've got very old Leandra beads that have been up on the wall for some time. This is a technique that I did years and years ago and it's a bit like a fondue system with UT. So you need a melt pot and you get um, something on the start of your, of your bead and I used strips of text paper and then you dip your bead into the UT and build up the sizes of it over and over again and then I finished with a clear layer on top and there's metal in there, there's wire, beads, all kinds of things going on. So that might be something you want to try, perhaps we should probably do a video on it. So that's metal, don't forget on metal you can also use alcohol inks as well, it's another way to, to um, accentuate the patterns on there and alcohol inks are another shiny thing, they're a translucent. This is some of the other stamped metal ideas. We always make our own name tags when we were doing our artsy crafts events. Uh, here's alcohol ink on top of um, some chocolate coloured metal. And then making flowers, layered textured flowers and things. So just a zillion things you can do with metal. I think I've shown you this before in a video and this is using lots of layers and even though it looks quite classic and elegant because we've just got chalk or snowflake and stone coloured paint there is a touch of silver treasure gold on top of that as well which just gives it a nice little shine. Um, many of you might have been lucky enough to go to classes with Finnabar. I've done, this is one that I did with her and again this fits the theme, shiny stuff. So she loves to build up lots of layers of embellishments and then paint them. Sometimes she uses black sprays and comes over with mica sprays. Other times it's paints. Um, I sort of tweaked this a bit when I got home and I added lots of treasure gold to highlight some of these embellishments that are on there. But it's really fun to do, lots of fun. There's some stenciling there as well um, and interference paints, there's a, a bit of that going on in there. So the interference paints also work really nicely. So last thing I just want to show you is treasure gold and this is kind of my uh, a fun thing to do with treasure gold. If you start with a textured surface, so this has got grunge paste on it and it's got some um, stamping into the grunge paste on there and then the whole thing is coated with fresco paint. You can choose any colour you like. This has got lots of dark colours on it and some light colours. That's all one solid colour. But all of these samples I base coat first with a paint and then come over the top by tickling it with treasure gold. So I'll quickly show you on this sample how easy it is. And just get a bit of your treasure gold on your brush and then where you've got your texture bits you can either apply it heavily or lightly. So if you apply it heavily you're going to get that really thick solid coverage and if you tickle it over the top lightly like that you'll still see the paint underneath or the texture of how you've applied the paint and of course the stenciling really really comes to life. A little bit goes such a long way. No, treasure gold's amazing, permanent on every surface, doesn't have a shelf life and it comes in about 20 colours. No, we love it. So this one's called Florentine, it's one of my favourite colours, it's a real orangey gold. So that's a very easy way to just make something shiny and look really interesting and it highlights the texture. Treasure gold always works best when you've got some texture on there first. Now don't forget treasure gold. You can use that beautifully onto this stuff. So I might have forgotten about it last week but I haven't forgotten about it this week. This is our crunchy, it's waxed craft paper um, and it is really good. You can use it for making um, flowers or you can also use it if you run it through an embossing folder, see on the edge here, and it gives that amazing texture. 
and once you've got your texture on there because it's a wax and because treasure gold is a wax the two are a combat compatible product so you can easily put the treasure gold directly onto your waxed crunchy paper no problem whatsoever here we use have used it directly onto flowers so this this bottom layer here is crunchy and it's been embossed it's been painted and then it's had um, a bit of our metallic glaze put over the top and this layer here you can see is using Florentine so just a torn tiniest little bit of crunchy add it as a layer a collage layer into your project and it just sort of sets it off as a really nice matted layer and don't forget you can tickle all sorts of things with treasure gold your little embellishments metal charms or even a tag that you might have in the background there add a little bit of treasure gold around the very edges of that and that can become a layer in your project all sorts of stencils all sorts of colors but it really is the ultimate in shiny so our fortnight ends January the 31st 2015 we look forward to seeing how you interpret this whole theme of shiny stuff